the uh, polyatomics will not be on the quiz tomorrow. It's just monatomics that you get from the position of the element on the periodic table. The polyatomic quiz, the first one will be on Thursday is my plan. We'll see how that plays out. Um, and it will be just on these uh, simpler ones that we learned today with this silly little trick. Okay, So hopefully you have uh, this pulled up or you can use it for review afterwards, however you want to uh, do that. Uh, take notes on your own paper and then uh, we'll go from there. So let me find my PowerPoint. And um, I don't know if it's saying all those. Oh, heavens. OK, let's see what happens. I hope they're not all on there. Sorry, are you guys getting seasick? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah, where am I? Stop, sorry. All right, there we go. So the. Um, Assignment last week, or yeah, was on sorting the ions, and some people got kind of confused about that, so we went over it. Um, part two of that is sorting the polyatomic ions, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Same idea, you're going to put them in the category um, that matches their charge, but we'll talk more about that tomorrow. So you have this list, this big long list of 68 different ions, and it's not complete, so there's lots of other ions um, out there. Um, some of these are monatomic, which means you can figure it out from where they are on the periodic table for most of them. And then <clears throat> these last two columns have a lot of polyatomics, more than one kind of atoms stuck together. So let's talk about this. Nick the camel ate a clam for supper in Phoenix is a ridiculous phrase. It makes no sense. It's not true. Uh, who knows if there's a camel named Nick, but they sure, certainly don't eat clams, okay? So what is this? This is a little ridiculous phrase like, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Probably most of you don't have an Aunt Sally, if any of you do. And, but you know that that helps you remember the order of operations for doing math stuff. Uh, same idea here. <clears throat> there isn't a Nick the Camel eating clams, but hopefully this will help you with some of the um, most important polyatomics. Um, a couple things about polyatomics. <clears throat> They're almost uh, all are two nonmetals, sometimes more than two, and sometimes or very occasionally there's a metal in a couple of them that we won't cover. Okay? And altogether, <clears throat> multiple atoms stuck together with a single charge. All of the common ones, or almost all of the common ones, also have oxygen as part of their little cluster of atoms. And all but two, you might recall, are anions. There's two cations, ammonium and hydronium, and the only one we really have to worry about is ammonium. The suffix A-T-E, the ending A-T-E, means it has the most oxygens attached to whatever the front element is on the formula. And um, yeah, it, keep that in mind. Eight and eight tell you there's oxygens, and eight is the greater number. The problem is, is it three or is it four oxygens? It depends. So here's a dumb way to remember it. Uh, one uh, with this little phrase, the first letter, <clears throat> or first two letters for one of them, is a chemical symbol for a particular, the leading element or the root element in the polyatomic ion's name. The number of consonants in the word tell you the number of oxygens in the ion. The number of vowels in the word gives you the size of the charge, the number of electrons it lost, excuse me, gained, because these are all anions. So it could be one, two, three. Okay, remember they're all anions. And the name always ends with A-T-E for the ones we're going to go over today. Okay, these five. All right, silly, silly phrase. Here we go. 
Nick the camel ate a clam for supper in Phoenix. And I don't know why this isn't registering, so I have to unplug and reflux. Sorry about that. Let's see if it woke up. Oh, Murgatroyd. Ah, heavens. This. Oh, fooey. Fooey, fooey, fooey. I don't know how to get rid of this stuff. Oh. Oh. Let's see if it goes away. See that. Yay. Ha. Huh. How strange. All right. Here we go again. My apologies. All right. Nick the camel ate a clam for supper in Phoenix. Remember the eight part means it has more oxygens. It uh, again, my apologies. Blue. There we go. Okay, so N is the leading consonant, and that is the symbol, as you know, I am sure, for nitrogen. When we count the number of consonants in this word, one, two, three, that tells us the number of oxygens attached to that one nitrogen. We're not gonna write it like that. We're gonna write it N, O, sub three. Okay. And then the vowel, we have one vowel. It gets a minus one charge. Again, you don't have to write the minus, but this, isn't the nitrogen ion, it's the nitrate ion. Keep in mind that nitrogen can combine with oxygen to make an ion, but it also can make its own monatomic ion. And hopefully you guys know that it's in group 5A, so it's group 15, it has five valence electrons. It can pick up three more, that's the nit Tride, you have to enunciate in this uh, section. That's an eyed ending. That's a nitride. This is nitrate. Next one on the list is camel. What the heck is that? Well, you know, C is for carbon. There are one, two, three consonants. So again, we're going to have three oxygens. There's two vowels, so it's going to get a minus two charge. And this is the carbonate ion. Remember, carbon doesn't form an ion by itself. It shares electrons. It does covalent bonds. But in this case, when there's oxygen stuck to it or it's stuck to oxygens, it does form an anion. All right, Cl. I prefer to write my uh, lowercase l for chlorine's symbol as a cursive l, so it's more clear. Lots of beginning students think that's an i. It's not. It's a lowercase l. And okay, so clam, cl, and then one, you have to count all of them, three oxygens again with a negative one charge. So this isn't the chlorine ion, it's the chlorate ion. And of course, remember, chlorine's a halogen. Group seven has seven electrons. Grabs one more to get its octet. That's the chloride ion. Okay. So I'd and eight sound a lot alike. You have to be really uh, paying attention for that. All right, S is for sulfur, not sodium. So hopefully you're getting that straight. And supper, one, two, three, four, has four consonants and two vowels. So this becomes the sulfate ion. Again, sulfur <clears throat> can form its own ion, monatomic, and this is one that will be tested on tomorrow, not sulfate, but the six valence electrons grab and two more to form the sulfide ion. Okay. 
Finally, um, so Nick the camel ate a clam, ate clam for supper in Phoenix. P for phosphorus. And of course, you gotta spell Phoenix right. I make this work out, but one, two, three, four consonants. So, like sulfate, it has four oxygens. However, O, E, I, that's three vowels. It has a minus three charge. And that is the phosphate ion. And again, phosphorus can form the phosphide monatomic ion as well. So be careful. Okay. All right. So dumb phrase, really ridiculous. What the heck, you know? Who who thought of these things? There's actually another one that's more complicated. It has more words in it. This is enough. <laughs> okay, so again, um it indicates one fewer oxygen, less oxygen, because eight means it a more uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So nitrate, one less oxygen means NO2. It still keeps the same charge. It's so cool. I wish I had realized that back in the day. Anyway, it's the same charge. The charge doesn't change, just one less oxygen. This is nitrite. Okay. Carbonate does not have a carbonite in real life. It's not real. Chlorate can form chlorite, which is two oxygens. Sulfate can form the sulfite ion, and it has the same charge. And then last, of course, is phosphate. And also form the phosphite ion. Right? So they have <clears throat> the same lead element. They're all still negatively charged. They all have oxygens. The eights have one more than the eights. If it helps, yay. If you've got a better way to learn them, let me know. <laughs> but this is one trick to get some of the very most important polyatomics at your fingertips, okay? All right, there's a couple others that are really important. Again, um, there's only two that are cations. The only one that you need to worry about right now that's a cation is ammonium. I showed you that last week on a couple of occasions, it's a nitrogen with four hydrogens attached. It's positively charged, it's missing an electron, um, but all the others are anions. <clears throat> I'm gonna write them over here so I can do something with the chlorines again. Um, acetate's a weird one, C2H3O2. Uh, if you're a organic chemist or biological chemistry, um, you're gonna write this ion slightly different. I'll talk to you more about it later, <clears throat> but you'll see it written a couple different ways. This is the handiest and most compact. Two carbons, three hydrogens, two oxygens with one extra electron. That's what the negative one means. So seven atoms in a group. The reason why acetate's really important is because it's uh, the ion in acetic acid, which is vinegar. So um, this cluster of atoms combines with a hydrogen to make acetic acid, a weak acid that some of us like pickles and things, right? All right, super important ion. This one you have to get straight um, for your future success without a doubt. So O, H is hydroxide. It has a negative one charge. The name has the hydrogen first, the oxygen second. The formula is OH. And that's because the other stuff's going to attach to the oxygen. It can't attach to the hydrogen. We'll talk more about that. 
in coming days when we make ionic compounds. All right, perchlorate hypochlorite. Let's talk about this. I showed you this on Friday also. Remember chlorate. and chlorite. Okay. Most combinations uh, with oxygen just have two versions. The halogens are different, and that's because of all their electrons, but again, it's a story for another day. So remember, <clears throat> hypo means less, under, underactive, right? Hypothyroidism, for example. So hypochlorite is one less oxygen than chlorite, hypo. And then per is like hyper, more than, right? Hyperactive. So perchlorate has more, I'm not going to put that there yet, more oxygen than chlorate. Per Eight, 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 hypo, eight. All of them, I skipped this one on purpose, all of them have the same overall charge of negative one. All of them have one more electron than they have protons, whether they have four oxygens, three oxygens, two oxygens, or one. It's weird. <laughs> Just going to say it. It's weird. So this is the only uh, group of four that you have to know that I will test you on. Um, but again, the eights and ites are the most important, okay? Except hypochlorite, it's important because it's bleach. <laughs> There's so much to know. And I know this is overwhelming, and I know it's a lot, and I know that it's um, all these weird words. Hopefully hearing them over and over again will make them stick for you. Um, I put a link to the video of this gentleman who I learned a silly phrase from uh, <clears throat> on the document sheet that you <laughs> sorry, I don't remember if I did anything important to change it or not. So I'm just gonna take it here. So um, on this paper, I have all of those things that we were just doing, and then this is a uh, hyperlink to, um, I can't remember his name, to a guy who did this video. It's, it's a little bit long, but so is what I just did. So <laughs> if it helps you to hear it from somebody else, give them a listen, okay? Um, flashcards for monatomics. This is another document that went into your classwork feed. Um, there's a gentleman who used to teach down uh, in, um, down near Fresno, he um, made up this amazing website um, called sciencegeek.net, and he um, uh, has games on it, which is really cool. So he, uh, oh, just on these ads, because they're going to pop up. I don't know if you guys know this, but you can just click on the X, and it'll go away. Um, there's one ad that keeps coming up. It says start. Don't click on it, because that's takes you to their website, okay, so be careful. All right, there we go. So monatomic ions, that's what your quiz is gonna be on. You're gonna get five of them that are um, formulas with charges, like this H plus, and then you're gonna have to select which ion, what the correct name is, okay? Um, you know on flashcards, you've done these, I'm sure, like I said, for vocabulary words, whether it's in Spanish or in English or dates or whatever that you study, um, you can use index cards, they're great, but you have to go buy them, and you don't need to. You can just make little squares out of paper, okay, and make your own flashcards and paper clip them together. But write the name on one side, write the formula with the charge on the other side, and then just practice. Um, the uh, Na, of course, is sodium. You don't need to put any Roman numerals with the representative elements because their charge is determined by the family they're in and the valence electrons they have. Fluoride, remember with anions, you have to change the ending to ide. 
So with the non-metals on the right-hand side of the periodic table, you've got to change the ending to I'd. Um, you will have a periodic table for the quiz too. It's just 10 questions. It's really not long, okay? Sulfur is the sulfide ion. So it's in group 6A, 16, has six mass electrons, grabs two more to make a negative two ion. Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Bromine is bromide, chloride, Cl minus, calcium, it's just calcium, Ca2 plus is calcium, phosphide, it's P3 minus that we went over, strontium is an alkaline earth metal. And so if you recognize symbols, if you take a gander about where the symbols are and look at their names, that will probably help you as well. Um, but you can practice this on your own. Um, there is a link on here, and we'll use this tomorrow. Oh, this is what I was talking about, the start. Um, for polyatomics, and again, uh, I'm going to have you um, sort them on that document, but I think that's a good idea to make your own flashcards because I think it sticks better if you write things down. Okay, so hopefully that's hydroxide. Phosphate, PO4, 3 minus. And if you don't remember, write out the Nick the Camel thing. But those aren't, these aren't on tomorrow's test, so I'm going to stop going through those. We'll look at this tomorrow. All right, what I want to do is do a little bit of practice and see how we do here. And I'm going to go ahead and stop uh, recording so that it doesn't go too long. And I can post this.